Crixus here. We're loading into another game of depth, and uh, I gotta be honest with you. I know I said I didn't want to do another video with a script, um, but the topic I want to cover in this video is enough that I needed to put my thoughts onto a separate sheet of paper, um, or as a notepad document on my other screen, as it were, uh, because there's just a lot of things to cover. So I'm going to be doing this with a pre-recorded game, and this is going to be nothing to do with the game in the background, uh, but it does showcase a couple of things, uh, including the first point that we're going to talk about. Uh, but the whole basis of this video is going to be how to be a better diver in depth. And there's five things I majorly want to cover, and we'll kind of hit on each one and get into a couple of uh, detailed points as we talk about it. So the first thing I want to talk about is learn where the treasure is and when and how to grab it. Treasure is one of those things that new players can kind of overlook, um, as it doesn't directly deal with the threat at hand uh, being sharks, but treasure really does make the difference between a really good team and a really bad team because treasure is money, and money will buy you more weapons, will buy you more consumables, will buy you better, faster, and make you a more lethal team as a set of divers rather than the sharks, which kind of rely on actual kills in order to progress as predators. So the best thing to learn where the treasure is would be to load into a private game with no bots and use a sensor or an upgraded DPV and just kind of go through each... Uh, He's going to go through each map and learn where the most common spawn parts are for each map. Because they generally tend to coalesce into the same areas, even though they don't spawn in the same exact places, knowing roughly where to go is going to get you 90% of the way there. You can also use sensors in normal maps because it passively highlights uh, gold around you so you can easily see it even without the ping which helps you find sharks so we'll talk about the sensor in another video but it's, it's it's important to learn where treasure is now when to grab treasure and how to grab treasure is a little bit more of a is of a learned habit the best time to go get treasure is generally when both sharks are dead and you do not hear a heartbeat any longer go out explore as far as you're comfortable pick up as much treasure as you can and the second you hear a heartbeat haul ass back to steve and while you're hauling the ass back to steve it's best to learn how to do a uh, treasure throw now you could throw your treasure using q you don't have to be in front of steve in order to do it the q just pops up on steve whenever it's close enough for his auto pickup range and so you'll throw your bag, or in this case your shoe, as it were, we're still on the Christmas update, uh, forward full of all of your treasure that you've gathered. And the reason you want to do this, especially as you're coming from an open area back to Steve, is because when a shark grabs you and they thrash you around, they throw all the treasure you've collected just kind of all over the place. And God forbid you're next to a ravine when this happens, because if a treasure falls out of the ravine, it's useless to you and you have literally just lost treasure. Otherwise, you have to go back and pick up everything by hand. If you continuously throw this treasure in front of you, what happens is the shark grabs you, but your boot full of, you know, up to 20 pieces of treasure is in one nice little spot. And so if you can get away from the shark, or you dodge the shark, or another teammate comes in behind you, grabs it, and then proceeds to toss it towards Steve as well, you don't have to go and track down each individual piece of treasure. And this can save you a lot of time, a lot of headache, and if, even if you die, just making sure that all of those pieces of treasure get back to Steve means that whenever it's dropped back off, you can buy new, you know, you can buy new things as you come out of the respawn screen. Number two uh, is more of a learned skill, and as soon as you kind of figure out what you're you're listening for, um, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. It's to learn how to listen for sharks. Uh, there's a couple of things that will cue you off that a shark is there. The number one thing is the heartbeat detection. Um, as you know, the heartbeat will tell you when a shark is close to you and by its rate, it will tell you how close a shark it is to you. Now this only works off the closest shark to you. So even if you can see a shark out the window, and it's a pretty far distance off, but you hear your heartbeat just pounding away, uh, you know there's another shark closer to you than the one you're staring at, so you still need to be on your absolute top guard while you're doing that. The best thing you can do, honestly, is to start wearing a pair of headphones when you play depth. Uh, 
listen for water swooshes. Once you've figured out what you're listening for, they are loud as hell, and they let you know where a shark is, and more importantly, it can even tell you where he's going, so you can track and dodge it, even if you can't see him. You can hear certain abilities, even, and make decisions off of that if you're wearing a decent set of headphones and you have your sound quality turned up to the best of your liking. Um, for example, the Great Knight's Juggernaut, when he turns it on, you can actually hear uh, a sound go off when he uses it, and every time you hit him while the ability is active, it sounds like you're hitting a piece of metal. You've probably already heard it, and you just probably didn't know exactly what it was. It's not just the skin he's using, like I used to think. Um, Hilariously enough, number three is learn to aim. This is not a shooter uh, like Counter-Strike or like Call of Duty, anything like that. Bullet velocity is a major thing, and you have to learn how to work with it. You have to lead your shots because the water resistance slows down your, slows down your bullet time. Um, and especially long distances, this can really, really throw off your aim. So, the main thing you need to do is learn how to lead your shots, and to do that effectively you need to learn how to anticipate shark movements, mostly by watching their head and guessing where their velocity is, um, and learning how to base all your decisions off of that. Do not use the iron sights, believe it or not. Firing from the hip is just as accurate, and it needlessly slows you down if you aim down the iron sights, unless you have a scope or a night vision scope. Do not use the iron sights. Honestly, just go into the settings, check out your user set, check out your diver settings, and change your crosshair. Use a crosshair that is actually tightened down, and it will actually help you lead your shots more than the default crosshair, which I could not aim for terrible about until you can actually see in my videos me switching over to the tighter crosshair, and I can feel. Uh, I can feel my aim tightening up. Number four is a little bit different. It's learn to make friends and act as a team. Whenever you're in a game with a good diver, uh, ask if you can team up with them uh, and say, hey, I want to learn how to be a better diver. Can you help me out? I'd like to team up with you and learn from you. Most good divers are going to say yes. If they say no, you know, and they give you a reason, cool. If they don't, do not push it. Just, if you can, Remember what they did right and see if you can incorporate it into your gameplay. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions, but do remember to use the Learn tab on the main menu as well, because that's going to answer 90% of what you need as a new player. Whenever you're actually down to teamwork, and you may even have a full four-team divers with full communications, separate duties to teammates. Some will focus on the treasure, others on detection, um, spamming flares and whatnot, and that's something that needs to happen because you can focus on one thing as long as you're staying alive, um, and you don't have to worry about, oh, I need to buy flares, the rest of my team isn't worrying about detection, but no one else is picking up treasure either, and it's not all on one person. You work together as a team, you communicate effectively, because knowledge is your best defense and your best offense as a diver. And lastly, being a better diver is all about learning your enemy, and you need to understand the sharks in order to really become effective as a diver at high levels. Uh, so it does, does good to understand the base stats of each of the sharks and what each one brings to the table in a game. And so you may know that the Mako shark is the fastest shark in the game and the most agile, but what you might not know is that its stamina pool is the highest and it has the lowest stamina regeneration rate, but because its its pool is so high, it really doesn't matter. Um, whereas the Tiger Shark is one of the most balanced sharks in a game because of all of its stats. It has the lowest stamina pool in the game. And so knowing these kind of things can help you make decisions, such as if you're fighting against a Mako Shark, the tranquilizer rounds are probably not a good idea but the bleed rounds are, because most of the time Makos are either sprinting or lunging, and so that can really hurt them with bleed rounds. Whereas a Tiger Shark, the tranquilizer rounds are extremely effective because it just does not have much stamina to regenerate in the first place. Learn your species abilities and common upgrades. Uh, this will help you plan in advance, so if you know that a Mako is probably going to be gunning for a powerful tail first to kind of get in and get it out and make up for its durability, Learning how to shut that down and how many kills he needs in order to get it can help you plan out the pacing and plan out and plan a defense against the sharks as they come in. And know what the best upgrades for each species are 
and what they, how long it should take for them to get it, and what order they would probably be getting them in. Honestly, this isn't going to be too much of an issue for lower level sharks, because they're probably just going to pick what sounds the best to them, but against higher level sharks, this can really mean the difference between being completely wiped out or finishing a game with only two tickets left. So that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, I hope you take these tips into consideration and try to at least pick one of them into your next diver game uh, and see how well it helps you. If you can master all five of these things, you will see your ability as a diver go skyward and you may even see yourself on the top 100 leaderboard. I hope these guys, I hope these tips help today and uh, I will see you guys next video. Oh, no, no, no.